Let's take a call. I have some things I want to communicate as well later on, but let's go to Ron in Surrey, British Columbia, Canada, listening on KARI. Hi, Ron. Hey, how you doing, Hank? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, not too bad. Thank you very much. Yeah, I have a question about the halal meat. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know um, what what the Bible says about for a Christian, if we're allowed to eat it, buy it, because I know a portion of it is to... um, it goes to the Islamic state for uh, the Hamas, and uh, it's it's worship to idols. So, how is it on um, on a Christian view for us to uh, to eat this food? Yeah, that's a good question because halal actually means lawful. Uh, so there are certain foods that are lawful for the Muslim to eat, and certain foods that are unlawful for the Muslim to eat. Foods that are forbidden include meat of animals that die of themselves or pigs or to a direct answer to your question, food that is dedicated to the God of the people of the book. That's unlawful for a Muslim because that is a false God. So the Muslim has a particular perspective that is not shared by the Christian. For the Christian, we would look at the Muslim food or diet and say we can eat it. And here's kind of how it takes place from a biblical standpoint. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 8, I think you can also go to uh, Romans chapter 14. Either one of those passages are helpful, but the idea is that throughout the Roman Empire— Animals were sacrificed to pagan gods. This was done at feasts, in public occasions, and part of the offering was used in a ceremonial meal, but what was left over was often sold in public meat markets. And therefore, Christians had, well, they they, they were stuck on the edge of a sword. Uh, Should they eat this meat that had been offered to idols? Well, Paul gives an answer. He says that the Jews may have prohibitions, but the Christians believe that an idol means absolutely nothing. And therefore, uh, while it's important to think about the conscience of a person who may be weak in the faith, Paul makes that clear, and therefore he himself does not partake of that kind of food, it is permissible for a Christian who has a strong conscience and a strong understanding of the Word of God to do that, because he is not in any way imbibing superstition or pagan gods. He is not sacrificing in his mind to those gods. He's just eating the meat as meat, as sustenance for his body. And he is consecrating that food, as all Christians do, through prayer. So all of us bless the Lord. We thank the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for providing that food for our sustenance. Uh, for our strength, for our nourishment, so that we can serve Him and witness to uh, Muslims and and, and Jews or anybody else that does not know uh, that Jesus Christ is, is God in human flesh. He's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for by Him all things were created. Okay. Make sense? Yes, it does. A little bit, yes. Okay. Well, I wanted to make perfect sense. So uh, basically, we're, we're not. Um, it's it's okay because it's worship to a uh, false idol and false god. Yeah, because the idol means nothing. The idol means absolutely nothing. So the the fact that there's a superstition in the mind of a person who believes in a false god doesn't translate to the Christian whatsoever. The Christian eats it as mo- uh, food that is for nourishment that God has provided and and has it consecrated in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So for the Christian, the only reason you wouldn't eat the food is if it would cause a weaker brother to stumble or a weaker sister to stumble. Okay, then. So I, it, if, um, if I know a friend that... Uh um, that works in a Muslim community, a Muslim house, so it, 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 it's okay for her to uh, eat it then. Yes, consecrate it to the Lord and uh, ask the Lord to use it for strength so she can be uh, a, an apt witness to the Muslim community, be equipped so she's always ready to give an answer, a reason for the hope that lies within her with gentleness and with respect. 
So the also I'm looking up somewhere. Um, I can't find a verse right now, but uh, isn't it if you feel in your conscience of, of doing of eating it and you feel in your conscience because it's worship to the idol that it's in a, it's a sin because it's in it's in your conscience that you know it's not right. Yes, and 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 again, that's why I mention Romans chapter fourteen and First Corinthians chapter eight. That's explicated in both those passages. Okay. Primarily I'll, I'll in 1 Corinthians up. chapter 8. So yeah, that's that's the whole idea. If you have a weaker person who is going to be stumbled through this, then of course um, y- y- you don't want to stumble that person. Okay then. Yeah, no, you answered my, uh, my question there, Hank. Well, great. Nice talking to you. God bless you. Okay, thank you very much, Hank. Yeah, you have a good day. Y- you too.